Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, and welcome to DC Fans United. So, I wanted to make sure I got a video out for you guys today, so I thought I'd talk about one of my favorite books from last year, 2017, The Flintstones, number one. Now, I thought this book was really cool. Uh, when it first came out, I had no idea what to expect, so... These, this was a really interesting, I guess they call them maxi-series. So a mini-series is six issues, and a maxi-series is 12 issues. So Flintstones was a series that was, uh, you know, 1 through 12, and was really great. It was not at all what I expected. Um, so yeah, check out Fred. Pretty buff, huh? So the cover, too, is really terrific, and honestly, the art and colors throughout this are truly amazing. It's really one of the things I liked best about it. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And right off you can see the art is really high quality. So this is who worked on it. The writer is Mark Russell. The artist is Steve Pugh. And the colorist was Chris Chuckery. So I thought they did a really terrific job. And of the Hanna-Barbera books I've looked at, I thought this one was the best. I looked at Wacky Raceland as well, but I really liked this one. So you get the first page here, and uh, it's a caveman in modern times in a museum, and they're talking about him and speculating on what his life had been like. And then you open it up, and it's this full two-page splash page, which is really cool. It's what Bedrock looks like. And in classic Flintstone style, they've got the parody names on a lot of things. Uh, or like the pun names and the joke names. So like the bowling alley is named Cranes Lanes. And this store is called Spears and Robock instead of Sears and Robock. So it's kind of interesting. Another thing though this book does is it's, it, it takes on a lot of issues. Like you could definitely read this if you're... A, you know, a, a young person, like a child maybe even. But there's so much in this that is for adults. Like, almost all of the story and everything, really. Like, for instance, this joke name place here is called Homo Erectus. So, yeah, that's like their gay bar. But, you know, it's also a type of, well, it's what humans are. Or, we're humo, Homo sapiens, so Homo Erectus was the one before that. But anyways... Uh, Fred here is working at the quarry, and I really like the coloring on this book throughout. It's really bright and vibrant, it's kind of like how you would expect their universe to look. And the pencils and everything's just really good. So, this is a long comic too, actually, for a regular size comic. So anyways, trying to pick up the pace a little bit. So these crow magnons have been hired by Mr. Slate, and he wants Fred to show them around. So the thing with the Cro-Magnums is they aren't like the Homo sapiens. They don't have the concept of like ownership and stuff. So that's another big thing this comic gets into. Not just in this issue, but throughout, is like the concept of ownership and money and possessions. So uh, Fred's showing those Cro-Magnums around, and he goes and picks up Barney. And there's a joke here where Barney is like, Hey, Fred, did you know there's a bunch of cavemen in the car? Since to us, they're all cavemen. So, like, they take on a lot of big issues and heavy issues, but there's also a lot of humor like that, too. So, where they end up stopping at, um, because it was a pre-scheduled stop before Fred went ahead and got the... Uh, Cro-Magnums, but anyways, they ended up having to stop at the VFW because Fred and Barney were veterans, and one of the vets is having a flashback. So, or, or he's kind of, you know, remembering and having a bit of emotional thing. So, already they've taken on, like, money and possessions, and then now they're talking about, like, war and post-traumatic stress. And this is the first issue, and we're only a few pages in. So after that, he takes them to a fight, and they watch the fight, and then there's a little bit of, like, you know, poking fun at modern society, too. 
The fighter says, I'd like to thank Moop. All good things come from, er, I'd like to thank Morp. All good things come from Morp. So they're already poking fun at religion, too. And then they go to the Outback Snake House and get some snake. Here's my kitty cat. Kitty. <laughs> and they, so they feast on the snake. And Red goes home. Wilma is working on art, too. There's like a side story where she's got an art project going. And they're looking at wedding pictures. But there's a lot in this comic. It's hard to cover in just like 10 minutes or so. So they get an invitation to Mr. Slate, his boss. He invites them to a party. So he sees Mr. Slate the next day. And he gives him a recap of what happened. And so it's the first day the Cro-Mags are at work and they're working. And they, you know how the Flintstones is. They always use animals as tools and machines and stuff. That's a real running theme through this comic, too. So they work all day, and then it's quitting time, and then they get paid, and they get paid with rocks. And there's a bit of satire here, where the cro are saying, well, what the... And Fred says, it's money. And they say, what am I supposed to do with this? And Fred says, I don't know, buy something else. Buy something someone else hated making. So they hated working, and they got money that, you know, to buy stuff that someone else hated making so you know talking about modern society so i mean that's really what this comic is is talking about modern society through the lens of you know a, a hanna barbera cartoon that was set in stone age times but i really like it i like it a lot it's not preachy it's more like it presents the issues like it's pointing out materialism is an issue but it isn't saying capitalism is uh, isn't saying communism is the answer or anything like that. It's just presenting modern problems that we are facing today. So they go to Mr. Slate's party, and they're kind of overwhelmed by how nice it is. And he's got one of the Cro-Magnums there, and he's trying, basically bullying him. He's trying to get him to eat a spider because he sees them as like being lesser people. So that could be a whole racism issue. Um, and he's talking to Fred, and the reason he respects Fred is because Fred was in the Paleolithic War, too. So they go into uh, a great more detail about Fred and Barney's service in later issues, but that's really interesting. So he's talking to Fred, and then there's a whole thing where they're all in a hot tub. And so uh, Mr. Slate's got a tortoise that comes and brings them uh, ice cream. But by the time it gets there, you know, it's so slow, the ice cream melts. So there's a, you know, they really managed to get the silly, like, Hanna-Barbera style humor like this, and the puns, and, you know, the classic Flintstones humor. But they also have it layered in with religion and economics and war and stuff that adults would find interesting, too. So he asks one of the cro to go and kill that mammoth, and um, the ma guy doesn't want to do it. So then this girl's going to do it, but then she gets cold feet, literally cold feet, and decides not to. So he gets this other cro to do it, and he goes and he goes down. He, well, what he does is he gives him that necklace he's wearing to do it. And it goes horribly wrong, and both he and the mammoth get flung. So it moves on, and that kind of killed the party. No one wanted to party after that. So everyone left, and they're all going home and leaving. And the last uh, two cro Mr. Slate says to them, I'll see you tomorrow. And they said, I don't think so. We're leaving bedrock. And they say, no offense, but it seems like the whole point of civilization is to get someone else to do your killing for you. Hmm. It's pretty deep. So it's pretty interesting. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot to that. So friend Wilma leave, and then Mr. Slate's there by himself. And he's just left alone with his service turtle. <laughs> so that's all. There's a whole, you know, the Mr. Slate character, he's kind of like someone you're not supposed to like, but he's actually got a lot to him. He's really interesting as things go on. So the side story, too, with Wilma's art. So she's been making her own art. Uh, cave paintings, actually, and they're being shown at this art premiere, 
but the art people are real snobs and they don't like it so they put her art outside it's not even in the main building so she finds that really upsetting as anyone would and she's really devastated and I really really love Fred in this issue and through all 12 issues because here he's man he's like the perfect husband he asks her you know what's wrong what you know and she explains and he doesn't really understand why the art is so important to her so what her art is is these handprints that she put on there and it reminds her of when she was in her childhood and they were like a tribe before they settled down into bedrock they used to make those handprints and put them on there so when you'd go back to the cave you could remember people who had passed on and everything so that's what her painting meant to her and that's what you know it meant like her family and all that so it's really beautiful you know this comic is beautiful uh, in its words and its you know art so the caveman you saw at the very beginning in the museum is shown again at the end and he's the one that fell in chasing the mammoth and he's wearing the necklace that Mr. Slate gave him and they're speculating on you know he must have been a chieftain or someone important to be wearing that necklace but he was actually like the lowest ranking person there so that's my review of Flintstones number one I hope I didn't ramble too much and you know I hope it turned out okay I hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think down in the comments if you end up seeing this um, did you read this issue did you read the Flintstones at all did you like it what do you think of the um, you know overall what do you think of the Hanna-Barbera books that DC has been putting out all right hey and if you have anything else you know you'd like to comment down there like you'd want me to do certain kind of reviews or do something different you know I'm always working to improve my channel so any feedback helps me out a great deal and you know one main thing too is be sure and hit the bell for notifications you know being subscribed is one thing but it's not even alerting people necessarily when I put out videos so be sure to hit the bell next to the subscribe button alright well, that's all for now 